So 126 appearances and 20 goals in a Swindon Town shirt. Player of the Year in 2006, a senior pro that helped lead Swindon Town to a glorious promotion. Four years of impeccable service to Swindon Town Football Club, up both up front and in central midfield. A sheepskin on the pitch, a breakdance on the pitch, and now our head of youth coaching. In the summer of 2021, this gentleman was arguably our shining white knight in our darkest hour playing a leading role in saving our football club from an oblivion and helping us put foundations of our current promotion push in place. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Lee Anthony Peacock. <laughs> Lee, how are you? I'm all right, mate. Can you hear us okay? I can hear you loud and clear, buddy. How are you? I hope you're well. Yeah, 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 good, mate. Good, 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 good. Sorry about yesterday, obviously explained, but uh, here we are. Happy days. Lee, you don't have to apologise to anybody, mate. Anyone whatsoever. Tyler, my co-host, is with us tonight. How are you, Ty? Um, I'm absolutely cracking, mate. I'm sure you are. And also joining us um, of a, in the wingman stakes, making his no. Tom Broadbent Lounge debut, none other than Archer Hanrahan. Archer, how are you? Oh, I'm not too bad myself. Wonderful. So, Lee, um, the format of the show is we have, for the past couple of weeks, been collecting a whole bunch of daft questions that we're going to pin you with, mate, over the course of the next hour. So um, yeah, yeah. Get, uh, get get yourself a brew, set yourself in, and uh, enjoy the ride, mate, is the best happy way that days. I can put it. Yeah, happy yeah. Days. <laughs> I just, just going to say from the off, any questions that you've got from Alex Beach already, make sure you've been... Because they'll be leading <laughs> into dark areas that I don't want to venture. <laughs> I said I said they've got no kind of rules on any like. I, but I'm not bothered about any question at all. But then he told me he's put in a couple of questions, and they, they just lead to places you don't want to know. If I'm totally honest. <laughs> so. All right, duly noted. Maybe we might have one or two from him, but we'll see. We'll see. I quite like the idea of having my guests slightly nervously. I quite like that. <laughs> But um, we'll keep you on your toes throughout. Um, I say, in, in all seriousness, putting put in the band to one side, Lee, um, I've got something I'm going to read to you, right? And if you haven't got the tissues by your side, mate, make sure you do. Um, <laughs> brace yourself. So listen to this. Lee Peacock, the player, was a catalyst, a person or thing that precipitates an event. In the seasons he was on the pitch for Swindon Town, it's the perfect word to describe him. The promotion season was owing so much to him and his performances for our great club. Lee Peacock, the model, never got going and peaked at a sheepskin coat and a monthly subscription to Heaven's Inc. <laughs> Lee Peacock, the man, is where things really take off. Lee's been a firm favourite from his playing days and his return was welcomed by everyone. Uh, the time that followed can't have been easy for anyone working at the club. It's not a time anyone wants to dwell on, uh, but we will forever be grateful uh, to Lee and those that stood by our club in the most difficult circumstances. He and they kept us alive um, and gave us more than a fighting chance. So quite often, big personalities have enormous hearts and it's a category that Lee has cemented himself in. His efforts will never be forgotten. He's a personality admired by myself and many, many fans I've spoken to. So thank you, Lee. We hope to see you around the foundations of our club, rebuilding it as we go for a very long time to come. And there is a pint waiting for you at any time. Oh, High praise for you, Mr. Peacock. I, no. asked, I asked the chap who's been a season ticket at Swindon Town for many a year, um, Ash, um, I asked him to pen a few words uh, to just sum up what you mean to us, and I think he's knocked that out of the park, mate. So I just wanted okay. to kick off by... Because I could sit here, Lee, and say thank you. On, I, I, yeah, I could just keep repeating those two words. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you and I have met on a couple of occasions. You and I met yeah. before um, before the purchase of the club took place, and we met very briefly since the purchase of the club took place. Um, and I've had the opportunity to sort of like say, I hope everything works out. And now I'm having the opportunity to say everything very much has worked out. And I'll tell you what, mate, you literally were the part of the glue that held us all together in the summer. So, mate, I, I think Ash has just summarised that brilliantly. Um, I hope you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was amazing. I, I mean, I listened to 
there was a lot going on in the summer and I was part of honestly an, an amazing team of back backroom staff and I think Hoops is on here just now uh, from the kit men, the people in the offices. It wasn't a case. We didn't we weren't coming in to go we're saving the club. It was completely opposite. We were coming in because there was a job to be done. We not get paid we don't want to sit in the house we know that things have to keep going because the club from the outside uh, from the outside looking in people saying the club's a shambles the club is not a shambles like it never was the club is the club the club is the stadium the fans the pitch and everything about it it was the other things that we don't need to mention were a shambles so it kind of upset me and up slash annoyed me the fact that you know, the, the club was getting the kind of heat and the kind of press, but it was nothing to do with it because you attach so many great... Th I attach so many great things to Swindon Town Football Club that it just really got to me. And I was going, but this shows the calibre of the club. When you've got every single person in there, I'm not going to say working for nothing, because that's not what it was like at all. But we're in there, we don't know when we're going to get paid, but we're all happy and we're all positive and we're all pushing but we didn't really have a doubt and the club turning the turn in the corner we just knew that we we wanted to be there that was it and i i'm not i wasn't doing anything more than anybody else there from the like i said from the guys and the staff the cape men the players the rest of the coaches now we just turned up and done what had to be done that was it, it was that simple Oh, Lee, it's amazing to hear you be so humble. I mean, brilliantly, we had um, Hoops and Jonah. I mean, those guys, as of you, mate, we've got a, a, an open invite to come on the show anytime. And I'll tell you what, the, 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 you know, the, the one thing that seems to link you all together in that respect is you all pretty much say exactly the same thing. And it, I'll tell you what's lovely about it is we as fans get, you know, we've got a very different take on that because... <laughs> It's all very easy to say, I'm just turning up, we're just doing what needed to be done, this, that and the other. But as I said to you in the build-up to this show offline, your role um, in keeping everyone's mental health um, on an even keel, because it's very, I think it's very easy, as someone that worked in football for 20 years, that was myself, it's very easy to um, lose sight of the fact that Obviously, the, 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 the football club plays such a key role in everyone's day-to-day -day life, their well-being, their mental health, their sense of satisfaction. You only have to see what, what happens off the back of a win on a Saturday. You know, we float through the rest of the week unless yeah. we lose on a Tuesday night and I follow, but that's a different story. Um, so, mate, I, I'm, it bowls me over to hear you boys talk the way that you do, and girls, of course. Um, all I would say is um, I hope you enjoy tonight, mate. Um, yeah. Whilst the questions are all going to be a little bit daft, um, there's a fairly significant list of people that will listen to you live tonight, will join in with us tonight. But yeah. also, there's a increasingly, there's a bigger list of people that will listen in over the kind of course of the week, um, yeah. sort of that follows this, that can't tune in tonight. Oh, of course. Um, I mean, it's a Friday night. We know yeah. what the priority <laughs> is on a Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, just exactly. Go, sorry, just go back to it. I, I just like those words, the kind words that were said when you put, oh, you, you put that together. That just, I mean, it honestly means the world to me. You know what I mean? It's not about being appreciated because I don't particularly look back in my, my playing career as anything other than I just kind of worked hard and that was it. Nothing can kind of, and you kind of forget special moments. If I'm totally honest, I didn't always appreciate or enjoy it. So, I think, like most players, you're kind of some people are marmite, some people like you, some don't. And I think the only thing I could do to con control or contribute at times was work as hard as I can. And again, that was that's not good enough for some people, and I get that, and I didn't have to the pingy. But the few people that I do speak to, obviously living living in Swindon, that that everybody's always so kind to us, and I, that's the reason why I was so desperate to come back. You know, because I feel I feel like this is the first place I really felt like home, you know, and I've never wanted to move over to my kids and that are growing up here now. And it's just somewhere I never wanted to live. When I left, when I left the first time, uh, sorry, when I left as a player, I, long story short, I, like, I was kind of crying as I left because I got, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go. And it's not that I didn't want to go green to me or anything like that. I just didn't want to leave this club that felt like home, you know? So, but I go back to it. Yeah, the kind words are massively appreciated.
Oh, Lee, you're very well. Listen, mate, there's one thing that I, if I had the opportunity to speak to every Swindon Town player or every player that joins Swindon Town, I would say these words. And invariably, Twitter gives me an opportunity to do that. And some people respond, some people don't. But it goes along the lines of this. If you, if you play for the badge on the front of the shirt, we'll remember the name on the back forever. And that's the reason yeah. you're so well regarded. Ir ir irrespective of your view on your limitations as a player, I, I think I am 110% backed by every single Swindon Town fan where I say you played for the badge on the front. Yeah. And that's why you'll be remembered forever as a legend at the yeah. club, mate. Yeah, so, well, you're, you're very welcome. So, listen, we're, so the way we like to run tonight is... We want to try and get under the skin of what really makes Lee Peacock tick, all right? And, yeah. and, and, if, and if we don't do that by the end of some of these questions, mate, then I will have failed. Um, I've talked enough. I think it's only fair and proper that Tyler kicks us off with the first question of tonight. Ty, are you all set? <coughs> yep, I'm, I'm ready to go, mate. All right, you fire away, Ty. The, audience, the, the, the stage is yours. The audience have baited. <coughs> Right. Uh, is it right that you are doing this from the bar? <laughs> I was I was gonna. That was the whole thing, but only if it was on video. <laughs> and, but there's no point doing it from the bar. Then I found out it was just a speaker thing, so you know, it's kind of pointless. I mean, I'm sat here naked on the bed now, so <laughs> but it wasn't be from the bar. But you're not going to be able to appreciate that right now, are you? Well, look, there's always the opportunity to put stills on Twitter, Lee, if you want to go that route, mate. But, you know, there may be somebody that wants to make some money off the back of it. That might yeah, well, be any of us for. So well, you've got the picture I sent you in your DMs earlier anyway. <laughs> 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 yeah, but, Lee, Lee that's the first. No, mate, look, let's just keep that to one side. We'll pick up on that later. <laughs> right, so we're not in the bath, but you're naked on the bed. Oh, so you've got to follow that one. All right, um, so... Could a peacock maul a shiradactyl, and how would he do it? Could I what, sorry? Could you? Uh, could a peacock maul a shiradactyl, and how could how would he do it? Oh well, I just it's kind of outmaneuver him with my flamboyant moves, you know. There's <laughs> it's just getting all those feather feathers up, dazzling yeah. with that, and then just hen pecking to death. Yeah, well, that was yeah. very well and good, Lee, but I mean. He's He's demonstrated a fine ability to raise a rather pointy finger. Do you not feel that? That could be a I know, but, but, to the but does that does that not say? Oh, listen, I I get the the kind of bitterness. I have my own opinion, and loads of people. What should have happened the back end of last season? But to come back after. In my opinion, you know, bollocks, I don't care. After the job he'd done, and today he's sticking finger up when he was hiding behind, in my opinion, it was closed doors. I just thought, what a muppet. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I, 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 just, I just think that, and I, I know someday I'll cross my but it is, it's just an idiotic thing to do. It's petty, you know what I mean? Even just kind of waving and smiling would have probably wound people up more. It's just getting dragged into this. And what the fans do with the opposition, they don't try and get them, like, they don't try and go down with anger. They try and wind them up. And it just, it was 1 0 to the fans. And it just made it crystal clear. One of my mates sent me a picture straight away from I'm going, oh my God, why? why <laughs> you that? Well, it was, it was a glorious, glorious victory for Swindon Town that day. And you've nailed it, Lee, on all fronts. He took the bait. Everyone went home happy. It was a glorious conclusion to be. And, and you sort of suggested look, a little bit of an outmanoeuvre, some flamboyant moves, Sheridactyl on his back, game over. Quite like that. We asked Tom Broadbent a few weeks ago how he'll deal with an elephant-sized chicken. And he just said, yeah, just a straight punch on the beak. It kind of feels like a similar vibe. So um, all, all credit to you. Here's, so here's the man you most fear then, Lee. Alex Beach has asked me to ask you, what would you rather be or a wasp? I'd rather be or a wasp. I, I, again, it, it makes no sense. It's just a stupid, we're out on a bank holiday Monday and we got on many topics and it just, it was a, it's a mispronunciation of a, of a sentence, isn't it? Yes, what it is. Fear a wasp? But when you ask people it, they kind of look at you like, you're completely stupid, but it's, 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 it's not funny. But when you ask and you get on board with it, when you're pissed, everything's hilarious. But that was just absolutely hilarious. Definitely <laughs> a wasp, anyway. Those bees are kind of one hit wonders with the stingers, aren't they? But it's a wasp all day. Yeah, it's got 
be a wasp all day. Yeah. I mean, there's got to be, because you don't really want to have your guts ripped out of you at any point, do you, to be fair? And, <laughs> that, you know, I think that's private. <laughs> 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 Tyler, what's the next question? Do you believe that Casa del Milby has issues with mildew? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Christ, I wasn't expecting these kind of questions. Nah, 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 nah. He keeps he keeps everything clean. Mildy keeps everything clean. Ian, Ian kind of lacking in that department. Clean sheets, clean house, clean it. That's how he rolls. Top <laughs> Mildy again. Working a little bit closer through uh, through the summer, he was actually a lot more meticulous to detail than I expected, and he was a true true leader. But yeah, no mildew in his house, nothing no like mil- that. No, 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 no. chance. Right. So um, next question: uh, If you had to tattoo any Swindon player on your face, which one would it be, and why? And that's from Paul Merriman Lee. Oh wow! Okay, I've got a couple of favourites. So I've got. got I can I say? T- can I? Can I say two? One on yeah. each cheek. One on each yeah, cheek. One yeah, one on each cheek. I go Payne and Hunty. The the being here a while, they're stuck about, and I just yeah, off the pitch. They're just the nicest guys. The nicest guys you could ever meet. I mean. They're both leaders in their own way, and you know, I'll maybe pick up a few birds with half and half of that face as well. <laughs> you certainly I'll attract a lot of dark hair, good looks. Yeah, I'll be absolutely ripping it up in old time with them too. Tattooed I'll, 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 be, I'll, be fr- I'll be giving you the old French welcome every day of the week with those two <laughs> feet, mate, as I'm sure Tyler would. Yeah. No, I, I, honestly, when, when I talk to them, listen, see all of the lads in that changing room, it's it's easy to say there's a good change of room when things are going well. It's not until it goes uh, nipples north that you start seeing cracks in it, like a bit like last year, and people start pointing the finger. But there's the, every single one of them, the gaff has created a, kind of, a bunch of lads who are just so humble in their approach and the togetherness, and you can see it out on the pitch. Up. Apart from like, uh, apart from Mike, apart from Harry, who's batshit crazy, you know what I mean? He's the kind of <laughs> the cherry on top of this cake, and it, but even he's such a good lad. They all are, and you, you see. And what what I like is, if any of you follow them on social media, you see them out there posting things. They're together. They're doing stuff together, and I think, did you see that last year? No. You no. were, you this year, you were, no, and that, I think that speaks volumes. I've been in dressing rooms where. You're out all the time because you enjoy each other's company because it's easy to go the just we're not friends, we're just associates, we cross the line together. Yeah, you're not gonna go on with everybody, but these seem like a group of lads, and even the lads who come in on loan, etc., seem to be welcomed, they seem to be part of it right from the off. So it's credit to them and the core of the players are there to be able to establish that kind of um environment for people to come into. And obviously it seems to be paying dividends on the pitch, you know, because it does go that when you are that close knit you do get a little bit more on the performance because you're there for each other that's essentially what it is each other more than just because you put two midfielders or two strikers up there together there is a level of competitiveness there and you get them out competing where you've got our boys in there and everybody's the roles and responsibilities are crystal clear from what the gaffer set and they enjoy doing what they do for the team and for each other yeah, there's some big bromances going on in that squad. Yeah. Lee. You, you can see it a mile off. And I, like I said, mate, I, you, you, I, I think it would be a very smart move to get both of those tattooed on your cheeks, mate. <laughs> there, there, there's, there's some big opportunities out and around town with those two plastered all over your face. Here's, here's a question for you then, Lee. This one's from Dazza. He said, now, Lee, uh, together, you and I were once rather worse for wear at Tiger Tiger in Gun Wharf. And you told me about a player we had on trial who would be the best signing the club would ever make. Do you remember who it was? Oh, um, the, the easy one could be Charlie Austin. <laughs> yes, that would that now that really would be something, <laughs> wouldn't it? That, that, say, would, that would fit the time period. Uh, if it was Charlie Austin, because he came in on trial and it was like he he. he he just couldn't not hit the target. 
everything yeah. he just went in and trained. It was like, oh my god. But I got close friends, but essentially he was kicking me out of the club, the little turd. But <laughs> I appreciated how good he was, and I can kind of help with him. And he was we got on really well, obviously. But I try to think. I try to think. I mean, no, yeah, I've been. I'll, I'll, jump, I'll, I'll jump in on the Charlie Austin thing. So it was an interesting time for me when Charlie was on trial and then began his career proper at the club because yeah. I, was the, I, I was part of the business that was the main sponsor of the shirts. You remember the 442 yeah, years? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it, what really struck me behind the scenes was how many people took credit for, um, I, so for finding Charlie Austin and getting him to the club. I think I had conversations with, Bert, with Budgie, with Danny Wilson, uh, with Ken Ryder... Um, with Nick Watkins, a um, whole host of people take credit. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel that we're on a similar vein with you there, Lee. I quite like that. It's because yeah, there's some yeah. consistency. No, I mean, I just, you, when you come in, you can see the the things he done. It was, it's, it's like, I don't know, I played with, with strikers before, like Jamie Turing, for instance. Great striker, born idle, wouldn't move. But the ball would always just land where he was without moving. It's like a sixth sense they've got. But Charlie was, and he could, the thing that with Charlie that was different, he could, he, he just hit things from strange angles. And because he's doing it, keepers and defenders, I think maybe that's the rawness of coming from, um, coming from the lower leagues where he'd been playing previously. He was just getting snapshots that defenders expect you to, Go a certain way because your coach get out of your feet. Your body shape should be this, blah blah blah. And defenders and keepers can read that. So when you've not been coached that and you're really unorthodox, it catches everybody cold. And that was the thing that stood out for me. There was, um, yeah, and he just like you never see him hitting it over the bar and it just the right place, right time. I know Bournemouth were meant to yeah. sign him, but then they couldn't afford his contract of something like I don't know, it was like five hundred quid a week or something like that, and they couldn't. They were struggling at this time, so they missed out, and we uh, we got him. I'd never heard of him. I'd heard about his goal ratio and everything like that. So yeah, other than that, I wasn't too sure what it, um, who who this other player could be. This is as he mentioned it. No, oh. no, I think you've possibly nailed it, mate. I, and I'm sure Dazza, who po pens, has posed that question to you, will probably agree with you. Interestingly enough about Charlie Austin, I was also very lucky to come and watch a training session. Um, and it was about the time that we had Thomas Dosserby, um on the books. And I remember watching him um, engaged in a bit of shooting practice after the game, uh, after the training session, sorry. And I could not believe the ferocity of Charlie's finishes in comparison to an established Senegalese international who yeah. literally was struggling to hit the target. Charlie was practically breaking the net with every single strike. And also, even though he was in training, he was celebrating every goal like he had just scored out on the county ground. So um, he just loved to score a goal, didn't he, the lad? Loved it. Yeah, he had an absolute hammer of a strike with a uh, kind of limited back lift. But yeah, it, it was, I was only there a limited time. and But you can see the quality there. But yeah, no doubt I was talking crap and gun wharf and just trying to <laughs> top in the blow for him taking my place, really. Oh, it'd be a great sign. It would be the greatest player ever. It would have to be to take my place. It's kind of where I was thinking I was leading it on that Ooh. night. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you, you, you signed your own death warrant there, Pete. Well, yeah. uh, Tyler, do you, do you want to give us the next one? Well, it's sort of about me, isn't it? Yeah. It sort of oh, is, no, yeah. I don't mind asking it. Oh, no, I'll fire away. It is, it is no worries. As penance for your time at Ashton Gate, should you allow me to kick you square in your Bristol City? So, because of my time there, should I get, get a kick in the back wheels? <laughs> that, that, that is the question. But, but this is what I don't get. This is... People say that, and... but. I never saw the rivalry between uh, between City and Swindon. I didn't, not until I commented when uh, I came back here, but not not that. All I've seen is we had a, a communal a passion and hatred for Bristol Rovers. I saw it more as a family together. We can pull together and really hate them. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that is fun. Oh. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't sit comfortably with me, that, Lee. I think you're reaching a bit, pal. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 like, do you hate City more than Rovers? Definitely. Well, yes, 100%. 100%. Um, really? 
It's weird. I've met two of them. I've met, I've met a few who've got the equal passion for hatred for Rovers, but I, I can't stand them. I can't stand I mean, them. Yeah. It's, it's a very, very strange relationship between Swindonians and Bristolians. But I mean, Lee, I, 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 me personally, there's some family history there because my uncle used to be a steward at the county ground. And yeah. in the space of one season, he had, he had his car staved in, his brother was given a shoe in, he had a brick thrown at the uh, at the back of his head from the terrace. So um, that, my my uh, disliking for Bristol City is, is probably a little bit more personal. But um, I thought that, yeah. that's going to be an ex-wife story there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's your take, Tyler? Do you think we should? Um, do, do you think Lee's got an interesting formula there for how we should tackle Rovers, or is he is he hopelessly wide of the mark? No, I, I think for the first time in his career, he, he's wide of the mark. Ah, <laughs> see, I've, I've, I've just never, I've never, I've never known it because I know obviously Swindon got a hatred for Oxford. I'm not going to say uh, actually I do. I can't stand Oxford for all. <laughs> I never played against the Swindon. They were always kind of non-league, and we were kind of League One, League Two. So I never had the privilege of playing in that derby. Uh, I didn't play. I didn't play in the City game, so I didn't experience. I played for City against Swindon, but I didn't play for Swindon against City, so I didn't experience that. But uh, the Bristol Rovers, because I remember the year we went up, we went Bristol Rovers, and one of the our old, and it just summed them morons up. One of our all the um, supporters that went through got roughed up, to say the least, by a couple of younger Bristol Rovers fans on the day. I remember uh, that was uh, when we went over at Bristol, and I just went, it's not a shock, it's a disgrace. But for me, it just didn't feel like a shock. I felt like that's kind of what happens with them. Ah, um, uh, I see. Well, all right, look, on, on a similar vein, Lee, Mike Dixon has asked has asked me to pose this question, and it's, there's links to your old strike partner Christian Roberts in this one. Is Lee Peacock jealous that he also used to play for City, but is all right now? But you never got any acknowledgement of that in a song. Yeah, but I actually am all right now. He never was. Robo is a complex character as well. I think he's where you do now. You go, no, I don't think about he's all right now. But like, is he all right now? It's more of a question about Robo. But um, yeah, he's. I don't. I don't. I don't think I had a song. I don't think I've really had a song anywhere. I just like my name doesn't rhyme with anything. Anything. Don't worry, we're, we're gonna fi we'll fix that for you. We'll fix that for you tomorrow, Lee. That's not a problem. <laughs> I've wrote a few songs about myself that I can share with you at some point. <laughs> Go ahead, Lee. Like, the stage is yours. I'll send you a few, mate. One of you raps, if that helps. I don't know. <laughs> I can get Archer to drop a beat for you, mate, if you want to go for it. <laughs> just just yeah. say the word. Say the word. <laughs> right, let's, enough of that nonsense. Archer, what's the next so, question? I've uh, got a question from uh, Green Pumice. Uh, was Danny Wilson a manager you looked up to? No, yes. that Danny Wilson was about five foot two. Yeah, until he let me go, 100%. I loved him until that point. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I did with City and he was different class and then he, he come in and he was he, he was a good manager, he was fun and everything, but uh, he changed like a lot of a lot of managers do. He he went to uh, City from Barnsley, still a like do you know what I mean? He's still in the high manager, but by the time he got to Sweden he'd been like a heartly pull and everything and been in the fight and I d I, I don't know, he's, he just kinda changed to a degree at that point. But yeah, I've got uh, essentially, what was it? Probably about six years I played under him in total, and I, I did. I, I loved it. There was never a bad time. The, he was always completely honest, even towards the end. It's got it was, and I, and, I, and I kid, but he was he was just so honest with his. And uh, when I was leaving the club, were amazing with me, considering what happened. Once they what, but they really looked after me because, uh, like in Watkins and that had gone. We're not, there's six of us or seven of us were leaving in that giant window, window and he goes, we're not doing this with the best of life. we're doing it with you because of your service to the club. And I massively appreciated it, you know. Um, I'd had my second backup uh, at that point and I think I know 
Danny with that because he told me not to get the back operation um, and I went and had it because I was struggling and then I had a problem with it. I had to go in again and I was just I'd never the same again. Um, but yeah, I don't know whether that can have tweaked him a bit to the noise, but I, again, I loved, loved it. Loved my time under him. I, he coached decent football, good football, and I just don't think he always had the team to take it. Uh, I know it's City as well. We, we just didn't quite have the edge to fulfil the potential. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I completely get you. And and obviously, one kick away from... Uh, it was an interesting take. There's many a fan take on what happened at Wembley, um, with, you know, the year of the Charlie Austin bubble. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it, it was just that... that, that it, it was just that little step to... It just was a step too far for him, I think. Just getting it over the line at Wembley. I yeah, think it was a, it was a, again, it's about having that edge. I've watched, I've, I've watched Town. I went to the the Preston game. I went to the Chesterfield game. You know what I mean? I was supporting uh, and watched it. Well, say watch it. I was blind drunk at the time, but I was there. And I just remember going. There's no presence. There's no edge. There's no. It's it's almost like at times there were. Some of the players were happy to be there. The Preston game was a disgrace, but it just kind of back then um, the Charlie Austin. It just it needed a little bit of horribleness. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That to manage games in the right way, to see over the line, and sometimes that. Sometimes I, I'm talking about our last today. Football's changing. There's a ball. Some sometimes it needs somebody to really kind of not iron people out, but get a hold of the dressing room and say what's acceptable, what's not, and I. I think when it was done back then, from things I've heard, there was too many clicks. So they were blaming each other rather than doing it for the right reasons. They were doing it because their mate's not playing. All right, all right. Well, and, and, and it, 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 interestingly, Mill, I, th I think Millwall that, um, Millwall that day had a, had a collective nastiness about them. I think, um, you know, their, their, their fans were up for it and they were doing what they do um, in and around the stadium. The, the, the team were just were just nastily efficient and yeah. you know and there was there were a few things that were said in the build-up to the game that yeah potentially taken out of context potentially not um that kind of worked against us on the pitch as well i think that day in terms of certain players on our pitch being targeted um and you know their their fans ability to to rattle certain players was the impression that i got from the touchline rightly or wrongly but yeah. um but all right enough about that then tyler do you want to do you want to hit us with the next one uh, the next one's yours, mate. Okay, well, I'll, I'll give you the next one. Um, Lee, which would you rather, Paul Sturrock or Massard Sean's Hodgetts? Paul Sturrock what? Yeah, do, do you want a Paul Sturrock or Massard Sean's Hodgetts? Oh, I've pulled Sturrock all the time. <laughs> Listen, we were away. I'm, it's one of the funniest things I've, I've ever seen. And this is true. I don't care who I'm stationed up just now. But we were, we were away in Austria. It might have been the time when you guys were about were out in Austria. And there was no TVs in the pre-season. We went play games. We come back from training. There's there's nothing to do. So the lads would sit and play cards. And I think, I can't remember who we had the, the next day. And then... Um, the gaffer still used to get DVDs and everything. And he <laughs> he come out and Blair was there, but Blair had the laptop and I think he was watching something at the time. He goes, oh, Blair, uh, tomorrow, can I borrow the laptop a second? And he had his kit and everything on. He goes, he goes yeah, yeah, he takes it. He come out, let's say, seven to nine minutes later, sweating like a pig in his dressing robe. He goes, you can have that now. <laughs> so I'll leave that to the imagination. But <laughs> crying. Just blatantly in front of all the boys, sweating. <laughs> 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 it's all about what I feel, Lee. Just contemplating you laying on your, laying on your bed while you're answering all the questions. I'm getting a little bit under the collar myself, big man. I had a, I'm, I'm, sat, yeah, I'm sat next to me boy as well, Lee. That's what I'm saying to you. I had a rocky relationship with Sheffield Wednesday with Paul Summit. It come down and I've... I mean, at Sheffield Wednesday, we... we I liked some of the things he'd done, but we, again, I was out the door and we had a bit of a kind of niggle, but some of the things he's done were batshit crazy. So we've got a hole, um, the day, hole where I think they were top three and we were playoffs. Massive game, bit of a derby, and obviously two very big clubs. 
So he goes, he, he turns around the lads, he goes, right, can I swear on here? Of course you can. Fill your boots. Yeah. We're after the water shed. <laughs> so we've done the, we've done the, we've, we've trained on the Friday, and he goes, right, none of you cunts, leave, leave here till you all got up in my office. So one by, <laughs> one by one, we're all kind of dripping up and everything. He goes, right, big game tomorrow. Training was fucking shit today. He goes, none of you leave here until you've had two drinks. And then behind his desk, there was like, eight crates of bud, bottles of wine, chips and dips and everything. And the lads had to stay and have a few beers. Some of the lads were paralytics there till Friday night. I mean, I've had next day beat a whole one nil. It was like the most bizarre tactics, but you were not allowed to, he just wanted to lighten the mood, take the pressure off. It yeah. kind of went too far, but like some of the lads the next day are so hungover, but it worked, you know, it was, <laughs> He thought slightly differently on that, but he was a legend. Funny, funny guy. What a throwback. Do you reckon, uh, so imagine taking Ben Garner out of the mix and dropping Luggy in tomorrow. Would it work? <laughs> I thought, I mean, like, <sighs> he had this weird thing, and this is what annoyed me up in the but it was something like, if your striker can get hold of the ball 72.8% uh, so of the time, on, over the halfway line, you'll win a game one nil. So it didn't matter what ball I got in; it was round my neck. It got fucking piece of hold of it because that was effective. <laughs> 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 that that show was kind of it was flirting with going down. I was getting hammered. But he, he used to have a guy called Mickey Evans. I'm sure it was down at Plymouth. Who was like seven foot and built like a brick shit house. Who could just wrestle and have the back ball. And I'm meant to do the same job as him. I'm in my third. I'm kind of in my thirties at this point. Got like bum knees, bum ankles, bum back, and he's just raging at me all the time. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's it, it, I'd love to see him. So I'd love to see him man managing Harry McCurdy. <laughs> I've, got this, the, I've, I've got one thing that's still a, you said because he always wanted the fittest team, and that's how he knew he would kind of. He, he could get through seasons because you have highs and lows and you have a look at the data from our lads, the work rate's phenomenal. When they work to the highest that they, they win their games is I was looking at the data during the week. Anyway, he, he, he'd save all the time, no matter what, days off, doesn't really matter. He, he had the most disgusting runs you had to do. And I just remember I every every Tuesday we'd kind of ask what's going on, Gaffer, what's going on? Go, Yo, you worry, I'm going to fucking pump you. <laughs> That's how it was. You're getting fucking pumped today. Like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you got, I, I, I can see it. A little bit, Lou. Well, so um, when I first started supporting the club, Lee, we had um, Lou Macari was the was the gaffer. And he had yeah. a fearsome reputation. And, and anyone that's in our listener list tonight and anyone that's going to be listening to the recorded version of this um, will all be aware of the legend of the first team squad sprinting round... Um, uh, various areas of Swindon hill runs, bloody yeah. circuits, the lot, and he had them all out on the tarmac, running around the, uh, running around the, um, uh, running around the town. So, I mean, as, a, as someone that's a Swindon fan that grew up in London, I missed all of that. But yeah, mate, oh, it's it's fabled. So I'm I'm yeah. pleased that Luggy, I'm pleased that Luggy put you lot through the ringer. Um, yeah. Tyler, Tyler, do you want to hit us with another question? Um, oh, uh, the next one, Archie surely has to say. Oh, you want, all right, where is it? Here we are. Where are we? Uh, is it true that Harry Parsons knows? <laughs> Harry Parsons knows. <laughs> I'm going to try to say, oh, man, yeah, yeah, Harry knows. He's a great man. Harry Parsons definitely knows, and Harry Parsons is, without shadow of a doubt, going to become a Swindon Town legend in my eyes in the next three years. He's got all, he's got everything I think he needs to get to the top. And I think once one goal goes in, he won't stop. No, I, I listen, he can play multiple positions. The, the difference between him and this is where we want to get the academy is kids coming through with passion for the club and he's got it. And he's got it in spades. He's always had that competitive edge. We had to... Um, there was a point where his anger was taken over. I'm going back a few years ago. I remember I remember speaking... To, I still speak to his mum and dad now. They're great, great parents, really supportive uh, of Harry. And Harry's been... He's had speed bumps that have really challenged him as a personality. Um, he, I remember we got him... 
he was he was pent up angry all the time, and we got him so level headed. I got him, we got him into this kind of leadership role. I remember playing down in Southampton, we beat them. I think it was like nine one, and the last kick of the game, their their lad went through, broke his ankle. Now the old Harry Parsons wouldn't have turned up the next game Tuesday night up at uh, Simon Sester. He rocks up boot and hand. He wants to be part of the team, and that there was I saw the change in him, you know, because wow. he, he wanted to be part of something. And I've saw him grow, and I've seen the frustrations of going with the first team and be back with the youth team. We played; he played for us uh, in the youth team against Oxford. Him and Mo, and the two. That was a great team performance. We beat them and everything. But he goes about his business representing the badge in the right way. He's. It's a dream to hear it. it it's a dream to hear it, Lee, and we tip our hat to Harry because he was obviously one yeah. of the one of the uh, one of the um, the fabled five that hung around in the summer, and um, and we appreciate that certainly from a contractual point of view, he could quite easily have thrown his toys out the pram and walked away. So everything that you're saying, I think, just sort of shines a slight, an even brighter light on the kid. And you'll know, Lee, that he's a very, very, very popular lad amongst the supporters. So um, I'm he's I am very because... helpful as well. This is the thing. He's if we're going back, there was a there was a kid with anger and attitude and everything, and we we worked. And basically, I turned round. I goes, "I believe why is you going to make?" And I, said, I remember speaking to my dad. Goes, "But if a first team manager come down to see that sees what you're doing, basically, he punched one of the Cheltenham. He got he got he got punched off the ball, and I saw it, and he just turned around and twatted this kid. <laughs> I, got, I appreciate it, and he caught him an absolute beauty as well. To be fair, I'm semi proud of it, but I had to do my job at the time. Um, and he caught a gun, but this was ongoing. He was in the game for like 15 percent of the time. That 15 percent, he was like a nine and ten, and the rest of the time, he'd fluctuate between a six and a three, inconsistent, angry, and everything. And then I just watched a kid. And I'm so proud of him. You know what I mean? The work and dedication that he's put in. Nobody else. He's been supported by two great parents and friends and people around him. And what you're saying earlier about Charlie Austin, I've seen the same thing. People claim it. It's not. It's what the player is willing to put in. They take snippets of information from coaches. That's not what make them. What we're looking at is a kid who's made himself a 24-hour athlete. And he should be extremely proud of where he was because he won't be able to remember these things. But I remember looking back and there was a kid who was 50-50, technical ability frightening, mentality was poor, too angry, too uptight all the time. And he's ad adapted and changed. Every year you see him change. And that's what's exciting to see because you put him in front of goal and he's an absolute menace. Um, every type of goal you can want, he can score. He's got he's got all the technique in the world. Obviously, he'll get fitter, stronger, quicker, and well, well, I hope he sticks around. But you you're looking at somebody who you might have to let go. Of. I mean, the, because he, he's got levels in him, got very good levels, and I really hope he does. Because that's that's a dream for the academy: getting players, being able to support players or be part of their journey. You know, we, we're not saying we, we're not going to say we produced him; he produced him. He, his mentality and his uh, how he adapted, he produced himself, um, and we just helped create an environment. You know what I mean, where he could flourish until he got the point where he goes in the first team. Since he's went with the first team, he's he, he's took off. He's a different player now. We've done our bit in the academy as much as we could to support that, but he's a credit to himself. Well, Harry, I think we've. I think that kind of answers the question. A simple yes or no would do, but that is quite obvious. Harry Parsons does indeed know. Um, Tyler, what's the next one? Would you skin a sheep? Oh, I I can't kill mozzies when they bite me. I can't can't do anything like that. This guy. I mean. I'm looking because I've got that call hung up just now, and I, I think I know where this is leading. If I, if somebody stole my coat and I had to re reshape my old coat, is this what we're talking about? Well, quite possibly. Like, you yeah, exactly. you want, yeah. well. Luckily, I've still got it. It's actually hung up in front of me just now because again, that was going to be my robe getting out of the bath to showcase. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, you've definitely got to put that on and tweet a selfie, mate. <laughs> 
because that was going to be the next question. Jeff over in America, who posts all the Swindon Town clips from America, was wanting to know if you still own it. So you clearly do. So, oh, but, the, but the only way you can prove it, Lee, is we demand a selfie on Twitter before the night's out. Night's I, out. Is that fair? I'll, sort that out. I'll sort that out, no problem at all. But the, the thing is, it was my lucky call that season. It didn't give every time I wore it, we never got beat. And then I wore it to Wembley twice, and then I banned myself and the club from going. So, but we'll never be back there since. But yeah, it was right. uh, that was my lucky call. In the summer, my God, I was baking, but I had to wear it all the time. <laughs> and wear it, you, wear it you did, mate. Wear it you did. I mean, it looks excellent. You know it looks excellent. Uh, I have no doubt, mate. Listen, <laughs> I, I had this debate earlier this week with Emily Rose, who asked me uh, what my views on that coat. I said I would have absolutely no no problems wearing that in and around South East London, mate. I'll probably end up with my car keys being nicked and losing my wallet and uh, various <laughs> other things would be taken from me, but include, including my uh, self-esteem. But uh, I'd wear it. I'd wear it, Lee. Yeah. Go back to the cheap. No, um, I, I, can't, I, I can't hurt flies or insects. <laughs> like, you know, I, I really should because it's a life. You know, well, I, I don't. Right. I don't be, right, but well, maybe got a, he's maybe got a wife to go back to. I don't know. I just well, quite possibly, quite possibly. Well, all right. So we've ascertained that the uh, that sheep are safe. Um, however, there's another question in line with your jacket, which Arch is going to ask. So you. Um, from Daz in Black, uh, we all know about the sheepskin coat, but do you have sheepskin slippers and underpants too? Oh, can you imagine how? Roasting your back wheels and sweating <laughs> get, oh. and shit's getting on these. No, it'd certainly be snuggly. Right, okay. So I was talking the old idea for a while. <laughs> but then I it come in and I felt like I'd be part of something rather than starting something. So I bottled it in the end. So I've never and then you see all the fake ones and I'd see a lot of particular girls walking down the street in the sheepskin boots and they'd always tilt inwards for some reason. Have you ever seen them? They'd always get the cheap knockoff ones and it was like the knees were knocking when they wear them right. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that kind of put me off that. So I just stuck with that one woolly monstrosity that's hanging up through there. But um, sheepskin slippers. No, nah, you, you're, not, you're not. You're, all right, no pants then. You, it sounds like you consider slippers, though. So I'm quite happy with that. So, yeah, Tyler, you, you... No, 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 no. I've not considered I definitely would. I just can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, along a similar line, do you want to take the next one? Very well. What the hell is that, Mark? Oh, those sloggies, they were his underpants. Who spells it like that? That's criminal. That's what they're called. That was the brand. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Very well, sloggy. You wore a sheepskin. Who did end of season sartorial celebrations better? Mine, 100%, because mine meant something. <laughs> <laughs> Doing that, all he was doing was trying to get people to look at his nudger. That was it. He said, he, he put all season, look at me, I'm doing sit up and bag him up. And then he wants to get his kit off. Mine meant something. His was in vanity. Yeah. <laughs> See, I often questioned uh, Cy Ferry about whether or not, because I seem to recall that we had a bit of a deal with Sloggies at the time, and he wasn't the only person that was being paid to wear his pants. So I'm a little bit cynical. I think he did it for the cash. So maybe it did mean something. Maybe it did mean something. He sold his soul to the devil. The thing is, when he'd done that, he didn't go out naturally. He was in the tunnel windmilling at first to get a little bit of length before he got out. There's no way he was going out just with his flaccid peck. He was just windmilling about, getting some extra blood in there before he had four <laughs> stations. <laughs> All right, well, listen, I'll take the next one. Um, right, you're a proud Scotsman. Lee, a proud Scotsman. Oh, well, so, I'm a Scotsman. Yep. Nicola Sturgeon, <laughs> Jimmy Cranky, Susan Boyle, Shag, Marry, Avoid. I shag all three. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have all three at the same time? You're sitting on the fence with that, mate. Sturgeon, you Sturgeon, Sturgeon, Avoid, Marry, Cranky, and Boyle. Definitely banger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
that's like a no, like a no brainer right there. Oh, right. All right, mate. Listen, we've got a quick fire selection from our friends at the Great Western Reds. These can be simple one one word answers, Lee. Are you ready? Yeah. First one, Liam or Noel? Noel. Uh, all right, just give give us a formation. How would you set up a Swindon Town lineup if they were playing on the moon? Think less gravity. One. <laughs> Thought, you, what are your thoughts on golden gnomes? Static. <laughs> How would you describe the sound that fans make when they do the whole "Go on, go on, yes"? The silence in between. How would you describe that silence to someone that's hard of hearing? Sexual. <laughs> yeah. um, Lee, um, no, I'm saying that because it's kind of what I say in my head when I'm getting there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Go, go on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go on. Go on. After the watershed. Here's one for you then. So, as part of the quick fire selection, Lee, can you please tweet your last photo you took in your camera roll and accompany it with the last message you sent as its caption? Sorry, what was that? I could, you caught up a little bit there, mate. Could you tweet your last photo you took in your camera roll and accompany it with your last message you sent as the photo's caption? Oh, wow. Yeah, I'll do that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but that's you, you... Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, mate, I'll definitely do it. Yeah, all right. Good, good yeah. effort. And finally, I'll... And finally, from the Great Western Reds, if you could live in one fictional world, TV or film, what would you choose? Stranger Things. Strange, very good. I know, very good. I know that's two words, but that, uh, yeah, that's a lot of that all. That's the stuff, 80s, weird stuff. I love that. You love all that. All right, yeah. we've got another question for you then. This one, Archer will give you this one. Righty on. So, would you rather take the Sheffield United manager's job or slide slide down a splintered banister naked from the waist down? I, I'll give you... I, I, I went for the head of coaching job at Sheffield Wednesday and I, put, I, I didn't feel ready and I actually spoke to the guy there and he goes, listen, I, don't, I want to take my application back and spoke to him. He goes, well, listen, they've got a, a job a little further down the line at Sheffield United. I goes, I never fucking work there. He goes, it's 60 grand. <laughs> he goes, 60 grand a year though. And I goes, I don't give a fuck. I would never. Yeah. I, I would rather open an umbrella up my hole than go. <laughs> Yeah, absolute no goes, and I'd, I'd rather not be in football than go there. I'd never do it. Uh, so you know, friend of Chris Wilder. <laughs> I mean, listen, people make mistakes. Is how I will see people like that. But yeah, I've I've had some kind of backwards and forwards where their supporters and some of them, listen, some of them are, are good people and it's a good wind up. But some of them are dickheads and they, they get personal. So yeah, screw them. Oh. That's, oh, all right. Well, that's a shame. But, uh, Tyler, do you want to hit the next one? You've enjoyed many a brilliant golf celebration. Who was the best kisser? I, but honestly, I, I'm, I'm sure there's a your mom joke in there somewhere, but I'm not going to put down that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, best kisser. I kiss. The, the, the weird thing is, I've kissed loads of lads on the pitch. Yeah, who's, who's, kiss, who's kissed you, you know the best? Who's, 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 who's kissed the most gratifying? JP McGovern. But yeah. I'll also say he's literally, and this is close on in the <laughs> in nightclubs, and we begin to go to the spot and that he's literally the best lap dancer I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> it's phenomenal. JP McGovern, that's He's got moves, the lad. <laughs> All right, well, here's a quick fire selection for you. Um, this one from Will Cullinane, who asks Lee, 
who is your best stroke worst player that you played with at Swindon Town Football Club? Christian Roberts. Is worst. the best or the worst? Worst. worst. I never know what he was doing. He'd just like, he'd run all the way across the pitch and then not pass and then run back and not pass and then he'd shoot and kill people in the burger van or he'd wrap it in top corner. I just didn't have a clue where to move with him, but he was he was effective to play with. You need chemistry. Do you know what I mean? He was a good lad about, but you need chemistry and I didn't have a clue where he was going at any point, but he was effective with what he'd done. So on that, worse, but not in the way because he was a good player, very good player, but being able to link up, I was lost with him. Best player, best player, and I, one of the best players I've ever played with who did not fulfil his p uh, potential was Anthony McNamee. Oh, what uh, a player. He was ridiculous. I mean, he was on a whole nother level. In training, I, I wouldn't go near him unless I could kick him because he'd see me coming and he'd do his little step overs and I'd talk, I'd just go, get them out of your system. I, I wouldn't go in and tackle him and go, get them out of your system and pass it. Just don't try and take the piss out of me. I remember we played Portsmouth um, in pre-season. Do you remember that? I do. And that stand and all that playing and he absolutely shredded them a new arsehole individually and that's what he was capable of. But I also remember his downfalls because he wouldn't, away games... At home in the summer, like literally an amazing player, amazing ability. His, his left peg was just disgusting. I remember we played uh, Norwich away, one of my last games, and the ball got pinged out wide. And he'd nobody near him, but he jumped and headed the ball. I think we were 1 0 or 2 0 down. He turned around the bench, celebrated, goes, I'm fucking headed it. That was it. So anything in the aerial challenge or him getting kicked, he didn't get involved in. I think that was his weakness. But Ability wise, yeah, he was on another level. He really, really was. The great Anthony McNamee. The streets will never forget. He was one of those players. Oh, Archer's, Archer's got another one for you, Lee. Right, on. So, uh, who was your most unhygienic teammate? Wow. I've, there was a few sloths in there. Um. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say I'm looking for the wrong way. Like I'm gonna say Easty. Oh, honestly, his like his pubes were ridiculous. Just never trimmed them down. <laughs> Ever growing all the time. So he wasn't like smelly or anything. Although I remember we watched the Super Bowl at Mine Eagle Round. He came round. Uh, and we did Jack Russell. We're sat in the, in the morning. We've had a few drinks. Uh, I think we had we had food and that. But it's me and him sat there and. He farted on the couch, and the dog turned round, looked at him, and jumped off. Looked at him in disgust. <laughs> ears, ears bleed that smell. It was disgusting. Between that smell and his pubes, it's just worth a mention. But great guy, great, really great. Cool. Eastern, one of one of our most one of our most fondly regarded club men, was also um, one of the most um, unhygienic. <laughs> unhygienic but even he if you ever ask him ask him about the time he farted in my house what the dog done because he's him. <laughs> the dog who licks his own asshole was disgusted with the smell he produced <laughs> well while we're on the subject of smelly silence you want to pick up the next one? Oh, do i do i let's let's give it to you go on then the smelliest opponent you've played against Um, I, I can't remember who it was, but I I remember <laughs> when I was young, I, somebody gave me a cheesy tash on the pitch, and it was... Oh, no! <laughs> I remember somebody, they'd been scratting down there and then just wiped across my top lip, and I remember, I, you can't get rid of that for days on end, it's there all the time, and I've got this... <laughs> I think, that's why, I think that's why my beard comes in pretty well. I can't remember playing against a lot of opposition players, but I remember it happening. And I look back at this, it's actually brilliant what he done. But the whole game, I couldn't stop thinking about, not him doing it, the disgusting act, but the smell, I couldn't get rid of it. 
And it was quite quick back then. It just went up my nose quicker. He got right in your head there, mate, didn't he? On one way to one. That's yeah. an extraordinary, extraordinary uh, mental, men, <laughs> mental warfare. <laughs> right, Lars, what's the next one? Right, so uh, what is the weirdest thing ever said to you on the pitch by a player and a fan? So kind of two separate questions there, but... I had, OK. <laughs> I've got this kind of extent. The year we got promoted, I remember arguing with a town fan in the town end and he called me a lazy cunt and I lost my head. I remember turning around and pointing in there and just goes, you, you cunt, come and see me outside. And it was like, he was with loads of lads and it was like the partner of the Red Sea empty just kind of moved apart and he was like there on his own. And then he ran on the pitch the day we, we played Walsall and he, he came and hugged me. He goes, you're a legend, that. And I go, fuck off you. My head. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I had, working hard, and he called me lazy. Now, if he goes, you, you shit, I go, yeah, fair enough. You know what I mean? I'd take that. But he said I was lazy. So, um, yeah, well, the strangest thing, um, I don't know, there's not really... I, I, I think... Fairly, I, 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 I used to do a thing uh, when, I, when I was younger, when I was single, I'm going to say when I was single... But I used to speak to the away players when we played at home. I goes, are you guys staying over tonight? So on set pieces, I'd get talking to them, just to annoy them. And then, then I'd just, oh, oh, there's a party. Remember FHM? I was going, oh, yeah. oh they've got a party going on in town and everything. They go, really, really? And then i just run to the corner to get away from them. Because all oh, you've got is get them interested in birds and get their heads going. And they got to the point, they go, fuck off, Peacock. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you, you know what I mean? Because you've just got to get them thinking about ladies. And their heads went... Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, all right, I've got one for you, Lee. What's the naughtiest prank you played on a teammate? I, 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 I'm not going to say anything, but I'm going to tell you what happened. I didn't do it, but it's the worst I've seen. Uh, we were at our uh, away trip. I won't say who, where, but we were at our away trip, and... Um, it got to the point where people were going and asking for the key cards for the hotels while people were down having dinner watching Friday night football and they go back and the, the rooms are trashed, all the new uh, usual nonsense. And there was two of the lads there and the Texan, because it, it got to the point where people were shitting in people's wash bags or in the trainers and stuff like that. <laughs> but picture this, so we're there and the lads... Uh, are kind of howling, but they can't figure out where this smell of shit's coming from. And it took them about an hour, and behind the bed, you know the uplighters? The uplighters? Oh, yeah. They must have piggybacked each other up, and somebody's shit in the light. So the light's burning <laughs> the lights in there, and it ran. <laughs> the guys are coming out, and they're gipping, but crying with laughter. It was just a, such a feat to get somebody... What six foot off the air behind the in the on the bed and curl one out into a little face of light. It was a good job. That's <laughs> a sublime, sublime performance of gymnastics. That's not that, that <laughs> It gets down to be so simple, and what happens in every dressing room, well, every dressing room, I'll be in it, goes, it quickly escalates into people out do and it gets more elaborate, uh, elaborate, you know what I mean? It just goes to levels, and people are actually spending their own money to get costumes. That, that happened at, uh, uh, happened, uh, at the county government, we used to get changed there. It, it was, you'd nominate who was shit on a Friday, basically, and then people were making up rats, you go, there was already, it didn't matter who was shit, and you could have the game, but people would pre, pre kind of meditate, they're going to vote for them. And they'd have CDs and they'd make a home with a rap about somebody's grandma. And, and that, and that was it. People, people bringing in masks and fancy dress just to vote on a Friday. It's bizarre. <laughs> well, <laughs> well. We'll come away from the fecal comedy. And Tyler's got a slightly steadier question for you, Lee. Oh, all right. This one's from George. Um, does Lee remember when he did work experience at the club and he promised him a pair of his boots at the end of the season? Never did get them, but just thank him for everything he'd done throughout the summer. And does he see himself as a first team manager one day? 
Oh, I mean, I can I can give him some boots now. Mine, I'll just I'll nick some off hoops. Who's on here? He always hooks. So I can wrangle him some. Be my good mate. Um, oh, first team. I, I, I've got to be honest. The back end of last season, I enjoyed it. I loved it, in fact. And I would have said yes. And they're coming in preseason, and I hated it. Um, it really put me off coaching in general for a while for many reasons. Uh, it was like what's going on behind really affected me, and I'll, I'll, there's still a degree of that there now. I'm starting to become more like my old self and get the passion and pride about. But for a long time, I've been off it. I'm hoping get this season done and have a look for the future. But I mean, I'm no longer. I wouldn't. I'd no longer be classed as a young manager because I'm old as shit now. Um, I think. I've got other things going on, and it's not that I'm not ambitious. I do have a thing where I I am ambitious, but I don't really want to leave the club. Do you know what I mean? Um, because everywhere you go, if you went to first team management, you're just going to get sacked. I'm not sure my personality, I'm not sure my mentally how I'd feel with that, because I've always had uh, money issues in my head, worried about it. And I think it's such an uncertain world. You've got to be a certain kind of character. I think potentially working with first team, I think being a, um, a frontline coach, I'd love that. I'd really love that. I have my own ideas. Uh, I watch the game in that aspect and to come up with ideas and do things that I couldn't do or finish off the, the great play that uh, some managers and coaches managed to develop through the thirds. I think I've slightly different things about time and building relationships that could help in those terms. First team manager right now, I'm not there. First team coach, being part of a team, yes, I'd love it. Uh, be part of Swindon, yes, I'd love it, but I'm extremely happy where I am, if I'm totally honest. Uh, well, listen, mate, as long as you stay attached to the club and you still got that smile on your face, mate, we're all over the moon. Um, yeah. Now, we're, we're going to register a slightly... We're, we're, we're sort of nearing the end now, Lee. You'll be pleased to know. The next question involves one of your old teammates. Are you ready? Simon's Cox versus Lee Peacock. Who's bigger? His head's huge. He's got, he's got like, two foot of head. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking about, like, an undercracker. He's got good girth on his wiener, to be fair, the lad. But he's another one who used to... Uh, like a helicopter it before you go in the shower. It's very good. What I'm going on, actually, I'm really proud. So, and he used to shave. He's one of the first lads who can go down. I, I used to trim. I used to trim. He used to never seen a razor in his life. But he used to go right down to get that extra inch. So he was a bit of a cheat. Big in the shower. Ooh. I'll give it Coxie. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger in general, I think mean, as you on regular body size and head size, I'm bigger, but he's got a gigantic cranium. <laughs> Archer, please ask the next one. Right. <laughs> right. So uh, all flights are cancelled and you decide to mail yourself home uh, to your preferred UK destination. Uh, is it SN1 or S6? Or oh, SM1. I live in SM1. Yay! I live in SM1. I'm up in Old Town now, and I can't see me moving from here. I love it. I love this bit of town. I love what's happening, and I can fall into bars and fall out of bars, no problem. SM1 it is. That's all we needed to know. Tyler, do you want to ask the next one? Oh, Mark shines bright. Chris could waddle. Graham can hide. And Des is a walker. But how do you feel about Harold Fleming? Harold Shipman? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> repeat, the, repeat the names again. I got the Des Walker thingy. What was the other one? Sorry. Mark shines bright. Chris could bottle. Graham can hide. And Des is a walker. But how do you feel about Harold Fleming? Okay, I've got a question for you then. Do you know my brother's name? No. Go the true story, and my mum had no idea. She, uh, Her thing when she found out was, oh, has he been getting bullied? I was like, no shit, he's called Chris. <laughs> 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 
Crispy Cock. She had no idea that she'd named him Crispy Cock, and he'd be getting hammered for 20 odd years. Completely true story. So, the next thing is, I think I got off lightly. Um, I think that's one that can have what's best. <laughs> That'll do me. That that will do me. Right, is is one for you. Um, so it's another Scottish question, Lee. Who theoretically wins in the octagon? Danny McGran or Graham Souness? Graham Souness. Uh, Graham Souness, absolute legend and Rangers legend. I'm a I'm a hun. Was up there and. Um... Yeah, serious legend. And you, you, you see what a legend he is in every... When he talks, people listen. So you, you see, like, everybody kind of arguing on, uh, like, Soccer Sunday and all that. He talks and people just shut up because it's his time to talk. He's um, he's on another, another level in every capacity. Triple heart bypass he had back in the day and come back as angry as ever. Just... Yeah, about a week later, wasn't it? He had his triple art bypass, and a week later, he sat on the touchline at Wembley. Yeah, do you remember? Do you remember when he done the the flag thing in Istanbul? <laughs> I do. Yes. Yeah, for Galatasaray. I think it was on the pitch at Fenerbahce, wasn't it? Yeah. Who does that? That's that's that's. <laughs> that's the let get stabbed, and he goes and puts a flag in the centre circle. It's just his his mentality of. I wish I had a fraction of it. His mental strength, his passion, drive, desire. You can't coach that. It's in you. And he was just an out-and-out winner. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, Tyler, do you want to take the next one? I mean, it sort of follows what, what the last one I asked was. Does Lee Peacock to Paul Trollope? <laughs> Paul Trollope. Um... How many beers have I had? <laughs> we give you, we give you a good, we give you a five. We give you a five. You know what? I'm, I'm at a breaking point. Is there money on the line? Is it just for banter? Or is there... Yes, he does. Lee Peacock's to Paul Trollope. <laughs> Fair play to you. Oh, so what's the next one? This is your. Uh, we we we've got so, literally we've got three left, Lee. So we're going to make oh. these good. Go on, <laughs> so, is Marcus Cassidy Butch? Oh, he's many things, Marcus Cassidy. Many things. I mean, hey, we've got the same birthday, so in that aspect, he's, he's top man. We celebrate on the same day. Uh, I'm, I, I can't say a bad word about Marcus. I love him. I just love he's the guy. Absolute. Let me let me tell you, nobody crafts a pitch quite like our Marcus. Absolute no. ledge. No, I, I I I I can't get pulled in with him. He's been at that. Consider he's a Plymouth fan. How he's been behind this team for all these years. The st- he's worked with no money, got everything. I I can't. I will not get involved in a bad word to say about him. He's an absolute legend and a great guy. Quite right too. Marcus is an absolute legend. Like you say, there's a big stain on his name, which is Plymouth Argyle, which <laughs> maybe makes him a little more effeminate than he than we would like him to be. But um. On, on the whole, as you say, been with the club for many, many yeah. a year. I, I've got a question for you then, Lee. This is your penultimate question. Describe your family tartan. Gay friendly. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Thing. I, I, the thing is, right, I, I, I've got no problem at any the world, like anybody on any level, you know what I mean? But I like fruity colours. I like that flamboyant thing. I always have either that or just black, you know. Um, so a family tartan, there would be something that stands out. Something I like things that people have an opinion on that I always have done. So I, I used to go out with my, my best mate up in, um, up in where I was working, like called Cannon, and there. Uh, we, he'd come down and see me all the time and he'd go, that shirt's f- fucking terrible, it's shit. And I'd go, okay, I'm happy with it now. If he said he liked my shirt, I'd go and change. That was Because <laughs> I didn't want to anything like that. I had another mate called Simi, a very similar thing. He goes, what the fuck are you wearing? Okay, I'm ready for town now. Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... That's gonna, I'm gonna make sure that comes back to haunt you, mate. Our end of season drinks, you can be absolutely sure of it. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring some shockers down and see how far we can stretch that. Um, What's up, buddy? So, Tyler, 
Okay. Uh, my boy's coming right, in with that question. Do you want to do the last one? Oh, I'll, I'll, I've got one more to slide in before that last one. Oh, okay. Um, Lee, I've been asked if you could describe yourself in three words. Oh, can I get my son to answer that? Feel oh, free. Yes. Describe Daddy in three words. Handsome, beautiful, and strong. There you go. Yay. I love this. Well done, <laughs> It's my boy. Handsome, beautiful, and strong. Right, yeah. Tyler, given that we're in the... Uh, I'm quite happy about the last question, given we're in the presence of minors. Um, over to you, Ty. The Kaiser Chiefs I predicted... Said, bitch. Don't worry about anything like that. The Kaiser Chiefs predicted a riot. What do you predict? Oh, oh. Slight breeze. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be Hurricane Peacock, but that was very much slight breeze Peacock. Just not going to end it anymore. <laughs> oh, outstanding. Lee, those are your silly questions. Have you enjoyed yourself? Yeah, it was good fun. Really good fun. Appreciate Appreciate everybody kind of turning up on here. And oh, there was a slight insight to <laughs> how my head works. Lee, you've been an absolute treat. I'll, I'll be totally frank, mate. I think there's anybody that hasn't met you um, that kind of hopes what the sort of character that you would be has, has, has certainly had that confirmed tonight, mate. You've been brilliant value. And I'll just take this right way back in a nice circular narrative, mate, to what we said at the beginning. Um, park your humbleness, mate, and, and, and take this one on the chin. Thank you for everything you did in the summer. Um, and I know you're going to say again, it's a team effort and all the rest of it, mate, but you really do mean the world to us, mate, as a figurehead at the club. So keep keep smiling, buddy, um, <laughs> and uh, hang hang around for as long as you can because it's, it's brilliant having you associate with our football club. What's um what we're going to do now, Lee? You're more than welcome to hang around, and and, and Tyler and uh, Archer and I are going to talk about the uh, the Sutton game now and have a little preview with Crawley. Yeah, equally, mate, we won't be offended if you slip off at this stage. You've been more than generous with your time. Why he's coming in? He's coming in is because he's what have I got to order? Domino. I've still ordered Domino's, so <laughs> I'm going to have to go and do that. The boss has spoken, so I promise this. We've got a movie night, we've got a sleepover in the front room, and we've got Domino's coming, so... Oh, anyone... Good for you. Well, listen, mate, don't forget, you've promised us a selfie in that um, sheepskin, and we expect to see that on there, mate, before the night's closed. Is that a fair one? Yeah, happy days, no problem. Like you have right as I said earlier. <laughs> Lo lovely job. Lee, we'll see you around the club, mate. I'll uh, I'll look you up next time we're at the home game. Thanks ever so much. Yeah, yeah. Happy days. See you later, guys. Take care. Cheerio, buddy. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye well, Tyler, um, what do you, what do you, how do you follow that up? <laughs> Impossible. What an absolute legend. What an absolute legend. I'll tell you what, I can't wait to listen to the... Uh, can't wait to listen to the recording of it. I really can't. <laughs> but we'll we'll move on from the wonderful world of Lee Peacock and the wonderful mind of Lee Peacock, uh, because there was a, a small matter of um, Sutton United visiting the county grounds um, on Tuesday night. Um, you were there, mate. Um, we'll um, we we'll go, we'll go through the usual format, shall we? We um, we'll have a we'll have a little look at the. Uh, what was, firstly, what was your what was your vibe in the build up to the game, um, on the basis that um, a couple of couple of changes required in the uh, in the lineup due to injury, um, etc. Um, how were you feeling in the build up to it? Uh, quite confident because I knew that we might have a bad injury crisis at the moment. Some might say, um, but Sutton's is ten times worse. I think they had eleven players out injured for the Tuesday. Yeah, and, and what was interesting, wasn't it, was that uh, well, probably the, the, the biggest um, blow for them was um, losing Dean Buzanis, their goalkeeper. Dino, who Dino. Yeah, Dino, Dino would have took it indeed as we sung to him at Sutton away. But I think the interesting thing about Buzanis is that um, obviously Sutton play a very distinct brand of football and Buzanis is almost like the quarterback if they were an NFL side, isn't he? Um, he's got unbelievable accuracy in and around the halfway line. Um, in terms of pinging balls into the box and putting pressure on the keeper and the, and, and, and the back line. So that was obviously a big blow. Um, and as you say, they, they, their, their injury crisis reached so deep that they had a 41-year-old 
former player it might add but 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 still nonetheless a player from their non-league days um now their fitness coach and not only was he on the bench a la Mildy, but he actually got on as well didn't he in the second half uh yeah if you're on about good old standouts yeah indeed cult cult hero at Sutton united but um yeah, it's. I mean, it's never going to be. Um, it's never going to be a good thing, is it? If you've got a, you know, a um, forty-one-year-old fitness coach actually having to come on and um, and play a cameo towards the end of the game. I mean, you would have thought. I mean, as much as we love Mildy, we know that we're being pretty dire straits if we're having to call on him. Um, so yeah, it wasn't just a sort of a, a token selection either, was it? So we um, obviously no no complaints from you, Tyler, and certainly no complaints with me with Jojo lining up in goal. No, ne- never will be. Never will be. Never will be. Um, Akin Odimayo, um picked up. Now, I'll tell you what was interesting. In fact, just talk about the formation first, because unfortunately I couldn't make it down to Swindon for the game. So I was watching on iFollow. Mm, and um, it, it, it's been, well, I know. So I am a massive plastic, mate. <laughs> I am so sorry to admit. Um, but um, I'll tell you what was interesting was that iFollow had us lining up at, with five at the back. Um, which, I mean, again, look, I, I, I don't know how well informed the people are on iFollow that actually put the squads together, whether that's something that's done behind the scenes at our club or whether that's something where they just take a bit of a gamble or they've got someone that thinks they're in the know. But they had us lining up um, with five or indeed three at the back, depending on which way you want to skin it. Um, and it wasn't... I, I So I essentially spent the, the first five minutes of the game ranting and raving uh, until Arch pointed out to me that Akin was actually playing at left back, um, and then suddenly you could quite clearly see that we were still playing the four-three-three. At which point, my spirits lifted, and we've scored soon afterwards. So obviously, we've gone Akin at, at left back now. Akin's been a, a, an absolute revelation, hasn't he? Last two games, I mean, he was superb against Sutton, um, and he was outstanding in the game prior as well. What did you make of Akin at left back? It's it's a weird one. I don't think anyone would have said that they expected him to do well there, but he, he's gone in and he, he's putting in a shift every time. Um, he seems more comfortable going forward on the left as well, which I didn't expect. Um, but against against teams that that are definitely up and around us, I think him at left back, he, he's so defensively solid there. It is just perfect. Yeah, I mean, clearly, what we what we lack with um, Akin at left back, um, obviously, it's enforced on us with Tomlinson not being not being available. But clearly, what what we lack is is Tomlinson sort of cutting thrust down the left hand side. But as you say, that's that's probably doing Akin a disservice because he's still getting himself forward. And I can't help but think a lot of that um, owes credit to um, Ellis, who will come on to playing left centre midfield um, and his link up play, and indeed. Um, Johnny Williams, because I think if Akin knows if he goes forward and manages to get the ball into Ellis or get the ball into Johnny, it's highly unlikely that's going to be coming back to him. And that's obviously going to be a big boost to his confidence, isn't it? And it probably will be a little bit more adventurous from that perspective. Um, okay, so playing alongside Akin, we had um, we had uh, the skipper, Dion Conroy, back in the mix. Um, from my point of view, followed up a, an outstanding performance on Saturday with um, another cracking performance. Um, what were your hot takes on Dion? I genuinely say that I think he's put in two <coughs> man of the match performances back to back now, which is very good going. Yeah, um, <clears throat> it's really interesting, isn't it? Because some of the the discord that we were that we were hearing in the stands and we we're debating ourselves in the bar was were we seeing the performances of a centre back that, you know, and maybe cast his eyes at, 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 at other options, you know, away from Swindon Town and and therefore he's trying to nurse his way through to the end of the season. Um I think the, the performance against Exeter was a real um you know was a real was a real killer in that respect. Completely with you, though, uh, Ty, I thought he was excellent on the ground. I thought he was commanding in the air. Um, he just seemed to be sort of playing. If, if Exeter was a kind of lacklustre, sort of shrugging performance from Dion, the kind of Dion that we saw at the start of the season, you know, chest out, head up, carrying the ball out from the back effortlessly, distributing into the midfield and beyond, some of his diagonals just absolutely outstanding. And and alongside him was, of course, um, Matt Bowdry, who's managed to get himself through another 90 minutes. 
um, uh, unscathed. And what did you make of Bowdry's performance? It's a bit like Dion, just very solid, like in the air, very good. With his feet, I think that there was one time where, where we sort of misjudged it and they managed to get a shot off in the first half, which was a bit a bit nervy. I think it came just after their goal. Um, but other than that, he, he, he did it all well and then really late on put in an absolute cruncher of a tackle where you thought he's not going to get up from that. And he, he sprung straight back up. So I thought it was a very yeah. good shift. Yeah, he certainly did. Um, I mean, he, he he looked the part. I mean, earlier in the season, we mentioned obviously the um, I was I was at the Sutton away game, and the thing that really struck me about um, Frenchie in that game was that he was so commanding, put his head absolutely everywhere, ended up with his head in the bandage as a consequence of that, but put in a man of the match performance. And yeah, Barber Barber slip um, in the first half where he's. He's given away um, a, an half decent opportunity that Sutton didn't capitalise on. I thought um, Frenchy was absolutely faultless. Um, and Mr. Dependable on the right hand side, um, Rob Hunt. I thought Rob Hunt again, Rob Hunt, good, solid, seven out of 10 performance. Exactly what you expect from Rob Hunt. Um, didn't put a foot wrong all night for me. Um, got up and down the line. Um, just, just, just quietly efficient, superb performance. What were your takes on Rob Hunt? Wouldn't disagree with you one bit. It's six or seven out of ten, no more, no less. Same as normal. So then we glance across the midfield, and we've got Ricky Aguiar. Now, if if you were going to be hypercritical about any of the players in the lineup on Tuesday night. I think it would be very easy to um, point a finger at Ricky Aguiar. Obviously, subbed off um, was a. Um, I, I think the thing with Ricky Aguiar is that, unfortunately, because of the circumstances of which he's found himself in the first team, and with the calibre of um, player that we've got sat on the bench, a certain Mister Jack Payne, um, Ricky Aguiar is going to come for a, come come in for a little bit of scrutiny, and I think unfairly so. Because I thought Ricky Aguilar was very neat and tidy. Um, certainly, I mean, obviously, he's he's raised the bar in terms of expectations with um, his two goals on his... Uh, it was his full debut, wasn't it, at the county ground? Um, and now the issue is, of course, that we're expecting Ricky Aguilar to be getting into goal-scoring positions, testing the keeper. And he's had a couple of chances in the last, um, in the last couple of games where it hasn't quite gone to plan for him. And I've heard a couple of little groans of discontent. And 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 certainly in the build-up to Saturday's game, Ricky Aguiar is one of those players where people are saying, like, maybe it's time like you just pull him out the firing line, give him a little bit of a breather. But um, how did you feel about Aguiar's performance on uh, Tuesday night? It, it, it was, for some reason, it was, it was much improved, I thought. He seemed to be re-energised after like a two-day turnover, which I didn't really expect, I thought. I think anyone with a bit of common sense would expect that makes them more like leggy and more tired the later it gets. Probably helps that that he um ended up getting substituted, so he he didn't get into like the later stages of the game where he probably would have been like extremely leggy. But for, for the time he was on the pitch, he was he was top drawer and just he he causes an issue when he's on the ball because you know that he can be a threat even if he's. 30 yards out, he can hit a shot and it will just fly in, potentially, because he's got the ability and the technique. Yeah, yeah and he's a, he's a very different player to Louis Reed and a very different player to Ellis Iandolo. So, for me, Ellis's strengths are running with the ball, um, you know, you know, loads of you know, he's, he's got tricks in his in his in his uh, in his locker, very, very good close control. Um, for me, he's one of the most exciting players that we've got in the attacking third when he pushes into midfield, Ellis, um, and that's how he opens up uh, opens up doors. Um, with with Louis Reed, it's obviously sitting deep, it's playing you know decent passes, it's his link play, and then he's obviously a big threat for us from set pieces. Ricky Aguiar's a, a different model of player. Um, people have um, drawn comparisons to Frank Lampard in that he's got a range of passing on him. Yeah, he's good with the ball at his feet. He's good running with the ball. Um, but he's the kind of midfielder that it almost reminds me a bit before your time, but obviously you'll be very well aware of the late, great Alan McLaughlin. Ricky Aguiar reminds me of of so much of Alan McLaughlin, as in bursting from midfield, getting shots away. 
Um, obviously, he's had a massive season of development with us this year. And and that's going to just... Get, I mean, he's going to go from strength to strength to strength. I think the sooner... He, he's got to be a priority tie, hasn't he, in the summer for, um, you know, ex- extending his contract. Because, I mean, he's he has enormous resale potential if we get him locked down. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think I... I, not to not to pat my own back here. Um, I think I was one of the first. No, to pat away, him. Tyler. Pat away, mate. I have no problem with that. With uh, being one of the first to call for him to to get a start, and uh, I think a Lampard comparison is is bang on. The late arriving runs, just like Walsall, it, it is what he does, and I, I can't say that I I ever got the uh, pleasure of watching Alan. So I'll I'll just take your word for that one, but. Yeah, I mean, if you if you're getting your name compared to to those two, then you're not doing too badly. Yeah, you're doing something well, aren't you? I think, and, and interestingly enough, I mean, it's quite a. I tell you, I tell you what does interest me is when we are getting free kicks around the edge of the box. Obviously, Louis, Louis reads the shoe in for those, and has obviously hit the target for us this year, um, and caused mayhem with his free kicks as well. Certainly earlier in the season, um, we all we all know. Um, and certainly Chippenham would tell us that Ricky Aguiar has got a free kick and a half on him. Um, must be quite frustrating for him that um, obviously he's, uh, he's uh, you know, uh, the likes of Louis are pulling rank on him with the free kicks because um, I really want to see him just wrap his foot around one. But I think the, the, the issue that you've got, particularly in this running, is we're in for a lot of tight games. So, you know, it's just a shame <laughs> that he's got he's got a couple of top men ahead of him, hasn't he, in, in the free kick stakes. Um but um, I am sure a direct free kick from Ricky Aguiar is going to happen sooner rather than later. Uh, watch this space is going to happen on Saturday. Um, yeah, exactly. All right. The returning Harry McCurdy. Tell me all about Harry. McCurdy starts, McCurdy scores. Normal services resumed. It sounds very Andrew Hawes at Plymouth, but it's yeah. how it goes nowadays. He, he is just lethal all the time. Yeah, I mean he's he's electric, isn't he? I think, um, I mean you and I you and I shared a text with a few people earlier in the in the week, and I I think I said something along the lines of at the start of the season he was like an angry wasp or a headless chicken or a rebel without a cause. Where I think the uh, the, um, the 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 metaphors that I used and the the interesting thing about um, Harry now is I I, I personally thought um, Tuesday night was probably his most disciplined and outstanding performance of the season. Some of some of his running for me was truly outstanding. Um, his off the ball work was unbelievable, and there, there just seems to be. I, I, I'm struggling to put my finger on it because I think it's very easy just to point and say, "Look at the way he's digging out the refs." He's definitely reined that in in terms of some of the verbals at officials. He's still having a go at linos and whatnot. Um, but he doesn't seem to sort of slip into that sort of sulky mode. He doesn't seem to knock him off his stride quite like it did earlier in the season. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we, we know he's got pace about him, um, but he's, he's a rival in the box. His timing of his runs in the box uh, uh, is really proving devastating for the opposition at the moment. And um, what was... Um, now, obviously, I, I was watching on, on iFollow and I, I played the game back. Do you think we were... Because um, I'll tell you what, I, I'm going to say yes to my own question, but do you think we were a bit lucky with our goal in relation to it being offside? <laughs> yeah, a bit hard for me to tell from town end. But um, mm. I, I'd argue that he's in line with the ball, potentially. So... But if our goal was offside, then they've also got a goal that was offside. So, well, yeah, I mean, it, their goal was an absolute really, yeah. So. yeah, their goal was an absolute farce, like an absolute farce. And um, I mean, I, I was I was absolutely raging. Um, yeah, my laptop was lucky to survive because at the point at the point they scored, we were swarming all over them, and we gave away a very very silly free kick. And especially against, I mean, given what we were saying earlier about the way Sutton set up and the way they play, you shouldn't be giving away any free kicks inside our own box where you can avoid it. And that was just so silly and avoidable. But um, yes, I think I made the point almost straight away. I mean, there was a Sutton fan moaning on Twitter, and you know, I just made the point to them. It's like you know, like you really are done by there. But equally, so were we. So it's just rubber the green, isn't it? Um, and it's nice that we got a rubber the green in that instance. But we'll come on to a rubber the green that we didn't particularly enjoy. Um, talk to me about um, 
I mean, I, I've, I've skipped straight on to McCurdy, haven't I? But talk to me about um, Louis Reed's performance. How did you feel Louis um, Louis slotted in? I mean, let's. I'll tell you what. Let's, I mean, the elephant in the room, right, is his red card. Um, now you were adamant where you were. No. You've just said obviously you you couldn't quite see the offside, but you've been adamant with me all week that that wasn't a dive and there was contact. Just how obvious was it from the town end? So obvious. It it hurt. It it was genuinely painful because you mm. can see Greedy knock the ball past him, and then as he's like gone to chase the ball down and just twat it into an empty net like anyone with, with a brain in their heads would, the keeper's sort of stuck his opposite arm above the ball to catch Reedy. He, he might have exaggerated it a bit, and, and probably has, but would he get the penalty if he didn't? Probably not either. Yeah. But it, there's definite contact, and it, it's, it's a definite penalty, and how the referee's given it the other way and decided it's a, it's a second yellow is, is quite... Quite baffling. Yeah. Well, listen, as I, as I said, I mean, obviously I was watching it on the box. Um, my immediate reaction was that's that's a penalty all day long. Um, I, I think the goalkeeper has deliberately tri uh, tripped him. I think the goalkeeper's essentially taken a gamble and gone, he's got to go. Um, you know, because, you know, if I, if I bring him down, he's, he's heading away from goal. So the chances are I'll probably get a yellow. Uh, but if I let him go, he's going to score. It was so obvious to me. Um, the the contact looked fairly blatant, but what what kind of gave me pause for thought until I started looking at the replays was the amount of town fans that came out on Twitter and said that's a dive, like, that's a dive all day long, and they seem to be really convinced. And I think you you've hit on it there as to maybe maybe what they were seeing was that he's probably over egged it a little bit. I mean, for me, I was thinking about it today, and you know, could he have handled it any differently? You know, maybe if he had just sort of essentially stumbled and tried to illustrate to the ref, like, I'm trying to keep my feet, and then gone over, it probably wouldn't have looked so, so bad. Um, not that it looked <laughs> not that it looked that bad, but it wouldn't have... I don't think it would have posed such a decision for the referee to make. But, um, I mean, he's literally just gone... You know, he's gone over like he's diving into a pool. Um, and even with the contact, you know, it's... It, it's just one of those where I think you know a referee goes one way or the other. I, I, you know, there's no there's no waving that on. It's you know it, and obviously he'd already picked up a yellow card earlier in the game, and uh, yeah, and then he's he's walking off. But I thought his reaction said it all because there, there wasn't. I mean, you know, there was there was absolute explosion of outrage from him. Um, and it didn't, and it seemed to carry on as well, didn't it? As he was leaving the pitch, it wasn't like. The sort of embarrassment. It was just like, no, look, that there was contact, and it would seem the club have clearly done their homework and have done their best, albeit it's been futile. But the club very quickly picked up on the video evidence, on photographic evidence. I don't know whether or not there was any support from um, from the Sutton from the Sutton end in terms of um, sort of supporting um, supporting Louis's claim, but uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, baffling decision for me from the referee. Um, but what it does do, Tyler, as they were, I mean, debating today, I listened with great interest with um, uh, Ryan and Rich on the Low Stranger pod, and they were talking about, you know, there has to surely be a change to that legislation moving forward, because it would appear from Garner's presser that the referees held his hand up and said, yep, yeah, I've made a mistake, but there's nothing I can do about it. And then that was compounded by a conversation with the professional game uh, manager, uh, management team as well. So they've got to change that rule, haven't they, Tyler? Got to make a legislative change. Must. Mm. Absolutely must. Yeah. I mean, it's... it. I, I you know, I, 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 I've never really been comfortable with the idea of not being able to appeal a red card, whether it's come from two yellows or what. I think that's part it, it just doesn't matter. If a player gets sent off and he's wrongly sent off, as per Garner's presser, he's got to go, right? So, yeah, baffling. But anyway, enough of Reedy. Um, um, uh, well, sort of links in with Reedy, actually. You must have breathed a sigh of relief, uh, young man, when um, Ellis followed up and, and rattled the crossbar. <laughs> What went through your mind? And would you like to, for those that don't know, explain what the context of you breathing a sigh of relief was? Uh, no, I wouldn't want to explain it. Um, 
but for us, <laughs> I, I saw, saw but... that ball fall to him. And thankfully, it wellied the bar anyway. But, oh, yes, it did. Oh, my, my heart dropped. And then it dropped again when I found out Reedy was getting sent off. So, but crushed. Yeah, bit, yeah. That, 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 that's the closest so a bit, it's bit, been. Bit, bit so of a far. roller coaster. For those of you, for those of you listening, <laughs> well, for those of you listening that don't know, Tyler has a, uh, a bet with Ellis that uh, if Ellis scores between now and the end of the season, he's getting IE3 tattooed on his finger. Um, and this I all comes think? off the back of. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. E I three. Apologies. And this this all comes off the back of um, Tyler giving um, Ellis a, a bit of a tougher, a bit of a going over earlier in the season when he was occupying the uh, left wing back uh, berth um, and demanding that Ellis um, his time in the short in the first team is short lived would probably be the politically correct way of putting it. But um, I mean, listen, going to go right the way back to what I said at the start, Tyler, with the lineup. One of the reasons why I was so desperately unhappy when I saw the I, I follow giving it five at the back was they'd immediately defaulted LSI and the to left back. And I've been saying for the last two, three weeks that, you know, listen, the, the notion that Ellis is versatile, it's a nice notion, but Ellis is showing you now as a left centre midfield and a midfield free that he is deployed to devastating effect in that position. Um, and you cannot... Um, play Ellis at left back. It's grossly unfair on Ellis because he, he he doesn't look comfortable there. He gets found out there. As a consequence, the fans get on his back. But I think the more and more he's playing in that left centre midfield position, the more he is showing Ben Garner, the supporters, that that is my natural position. That is where I need to be. And his performances in that position back him up. So let's not be playing Ellis as a left wing back. Um, what was your summary of his performance? He was top draw like like he has been since moving into the midfield, and I, I don't know where you can stop and start with him. Where, where with, with how he's how he's changed moving into midfield, he, he's just much more influential. The stuff he can do going forward, he can show a lot more without putting an effect on the game with his. I, I, I won't necessarily say it's it's. it's a bad defensive ability, but but it's just not not the strongest. Yeah, I think the pro the problem with him as a as a left wing back is that he just gets caught too far up the pitch, and League Two defenders are very very good at hitting long balls and long diagonal balls into the spaces that Ellis leaves because he's obviously um, you know he's trying to maximise his attacking potential is where we were getting found out. Um, you know, I. A nightmare performance for me, um, late in Orient away. Um, but again, I mean, we can talk about, I think it was Rochdale at home, he was found out. Um, and when he was reverted back there, I think it was, was it Bradford where he was, uh, no, it wasn't Bradford. What was the game where he was he was uh, caught dwelling on the ball, Ty? Um, it was a defeat and it was so like, oh no, like that's that literally is what we were seeing consistently at the start of the season. Try to remember what the game was now. I think it was, I think it was Tranmere, possibly Tranmere, but um, yeah. Listen, let's let's you know, we we I I, I genuinely could sit here and enthuse about Ellis because there's nothing I like more than a you know a bounce back ability story, and and Ellis's um, Ellis's deployment as a left centre midfield for me is one of my highlights of the season, and I wax lyrical about him. Um, if, it's a shame that he hadn't been deployed there earlier in the season because I think he would he would by now um, be in with a good shout for challenging the inevitable winner Louis Reed for Player of the Season. But um, okay, so let, let's let's move let's move on. We'll go back into the forward line. We talked about Harry. Uh, what were your what were your takes on Josh Davis, uh, Dav uh, Davison's performance? Because I'm going to tell you, my mate, I I genuinely think we have seen one of the contenders for goal of the season from him um, for a number of reasons, but. I'll let you have a chat about Davison. What did you think of his performance? Absolute batter and ram, isn't he? The size of the, those Sutton centre halves, and he, he's still giving them absolute nightmares with just his work rate. It's it's Jerry Yates like running that he does, and I won't disagree with you. It, it it's a goal of the season contender. That you're you're probably loving it more more for the uh, goalkeeper involvement than anything else. Speaking from uh, your own past, but. He, yeah. he starts that goal running from the edge of his own box, 
finishes it by chipping it over the keeper and slapping it in the back of the net. It's just, it's, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, composure personified. I mean, we'll take we'll take it we'll take the goal backwards, shall we? So, we think, look at the way he's he's taken the the strike itself. Um, no easy task, given that he's obviously he's taking it on the run. He's flicked it over an on-rushing goalkeeper, which in itself is no mean feat because most goalkeepers um, would probably be expected to make some kind of contact with the striker. Um, you know, whether that be you know trying to mask it as legal or just that, you realise, well, as the last line of defence, if I don't get something on this, it's a surefire goal. Nelson, thankfully, didn't do that. Um, and as the ball's dropped... He's taking it on the half volley and what a peach of a performance because he's still got to work it between two moving defenders as well um, who could quite easily have flicked a leg out and deflected it away. Beautiful finish, lovely pace on it. But just prior to obviously taking it taking it down on the run, the, the, the thing that, that you've got to look out for in terms of what Jojo's done there, so obviously he's taken the high ball, landed, and if you look at what he does with his left hand, he's basically created the space that's enabled him to get his body angle right to then arrow the most perfect, almost like a Dion Conroy diag, but just perfect pace, perfect length. Um, it, and uh, and when I say perfect, I literally mean inch perfect because Nelson got a lot of stick for rushing out of his goal in the way that he did, but he had to. Like, he absolutely had to. That ball wasn't going to carry through into the 18-yard box. If he waits for it and tries to go for the catch, Davidson's going to nip in, beat him to it anyway. So that kick has forced his opposite number. That Jojo's kick has forced Nelson to make a decision. Now, there is some hesitation from Nelson. Just that for a split second, you see his body language change a bit. Um, but still, I don't think that you know Nelson could have done a lot more there, to be totally frank. Maybe a you know a younger, you know, quicker keeper off his line could have come out and dealt with it. Maybe, but um, yeah, I mean, just an absolutely sublime piece of distribution from Jojo, and I was chuffed that Ben Garner um, gave him the credit for that as well. And and uh, in the post match press, it was very quick to say just how hard Jojo's been working on his distribution in that respect. Um, but as you say, back rim round performance from from Josh Davison. Um, he, I, I love the way you draw a comparison with Jerry Yates because I completely agree with you. Um, whilst obviously Jerry Yates would be on the left, sort of like working in behind Doyle, he's Davison is giving us a similar kind of um, level of output, but straight down the middle. Um, and for the, the second week on the bounce, you've seen him bullying giant centre backs, uh, which has been an absolute dream to see. Um, so on the on the left hand side of the um, of the front three, we had Johnny Williams. What did you make of Johnny's performance? Once again, it's just. He's very good, and then will pop up with a moment of absolute class. And I mean, his run for, for the second goal is, is brilliant. I mean, I've got to give Dion credit because because the ball to Johnny is remarkable. But Johnny's weight of weight of pass and touch is it's why we we have him. It's it's what he brings to the brings to the side with that with that ability. So. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny's the match. Johnny's a match winner all day long, isn't he? I mean, every every great team, you need two or three players in there that you know you guarantee that at least once in a match you're going to see something special from him. And more often than not, when we've had Johnny on the pitch, um, I felt that we've had that from him this year. Um, it was it was interesting when we signed him because you know I was given his injury record and he'd been in, a bit in and out at his previous clubs and then as the games are unfolding with him playing you know you're like well this doesn't look like a lad that's going to be giving us 90 minutes you know I, I genuinely think I don't know what they're paying Johnny Williams as a senior pro he's definitely going to be one of our higher earners you would think but um even even with his either his sort of you know his 70 minutes or his his 20 minute cameos to the end of the game um, you know, he's he's worth his weight in gold. And you can see he's so popular amongst the squad, isn't he? Um, you know, every celebration is right at the heart of it. I think, um, but you nailed it for me, Tyler. It's, the, it's not just his cross into the box, but it was undefendable. I think if McCurdy hasn't got his foot on that, it's ricocheting off someone and it's hitting the back of the net, isn't it? It was an undefendable cross. Um, as soon as he left his foot, you must have been thinking that's a goal. Yeah, it just had to go in. Like you've seen him whip it across the face, and you see 
I couldn't even see a Sutton defender. You just see Davison and McCurdy both running at it with with the goal at their mercy near enough. And you think, well, well if one of them gets to touch it, it's in no matter what. The only thing that can stop it was, was offside. But going off that Lino's track record through that 90 minutes, I mean, there was never going to be an offside. So... No, indeed. Well, I tell you what. I mean, in summary, um, I mean, we can talk about the subs. Obviously, we got for me, we got a you know, we got a you know, thirty minutes back into into Jack Payne's legs um, after his um, starting performance from the weekend. I thought um, I thought Payne uh, Payne does what Payne does. Um, I thought he's full of energy, full of running. Um, it didn't seem to be quite as menacing for me uh, when he was on the pitch um, on Tuesday night as he was at the weekend. Um, but given his return from the kind of injury that he has, you know, that we certainly forgive him. It was that certainly wasn't a bad performance. Um, the one sort of slight disappointment for me after his um, after his um, quarter of an hour cameo at the weekend, I was hoping to see a little bit more of um, of uh, Mandela Egbo. But um, for the um, sort of ten odd minutes he was on the pitch, what did you make of Manny? He didn't have much to do going forward, really, but. I think the one thing that he did bring us that, that sort of went unnoticed was because he's naturally a, a bit more of a, like a right wing back sort of role. He just brings us that defensive shape and, and, and helps like, uh, solidify later on in the game. Um, and especially against a team where obviously we, we need the three points. So that it's, it's two promotion battlers going at it. So knowing that he can come on, still be a threat going forward should we need it, but but helps us sort of close the game out. It, it, I thought I thought it was it, it wasn't a great performance, but off the bench he did what was our side. So I'd, I'd say it was one to put down in the good note. Yeah, I, 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 I tend to agree, and I think I think in summary, if you look at you know you look at our last two games, certainly not classic performances, but listen. Obviously, we're at the business end of the season now, aren't we? This, you know, they, all the cliches come out about, you know, good team, signs of a good team is like taking three points even when we haven't played that well. I think that's a little bit of a hard assessment of um, Tuesday's performance if you take that sort of cliche too literally because I thought we were absolutely scintillating in the first 20 minutes um, and the nature of their equalising goal seemed to knock the stuffing out of us. Um and as I think it was McCurdy himself that said um, when he was talking to TalkSport, that's the kind of game and that's the sort of performance at home earlier in the season that we were losing. Um, you get a sense, the kind of sound bites you're getting from our from our squad. These boys really have got their tails up, haven't they? They've, got, got their, um, they've really got a belief that we are gunning for one of those automatic spots. It was interesting that um, Ryan Walker in he on on the Life Strangers today talked about playoffs, but I mean I I'm not getting that sense at all. Listening to the way our our boys are talking, I, I genuinely think they believe they can go up in one of the automatic spots. Where's your Where's your head at in relation to the league table, Tyler? What do you think that we're gunning for realistically? Um, I think automatics is is definitely a, an option. I mean, look, we we've. we've We've got nine games left, and between us and second is is two points. Between us and first is is eight, and Forest Green are on an awful run. That that could be five points if we beat them. Um, I mean, it helps that Newport just lost to Hartlepool tonight, which mm-hmm. you know the, the team who was in third dropping dropping points is is massive. So if we can get what out of our final nine, let's say. 20 points surely surely that's automatics yeah you, you've got to think that haven't you and i mean we are you know we are one of the form teams in this division at the moment and, and i might add a division that is arguably the most bonkers division that i can remember in my time supporting swindon town in terms of it being so close so late in the season um, but I think we've we've certainly done enough now that you're starting to look at the gaps opening up outside the playoff places, and you're starting to think like we're going to do something horribly, horribly wrong to not be part of the playoffs. So, um, but like you, my um, I, I think the only reason I don't want to start talking about the autos is because we've just done so bloody well to put ourselves in this position against so much. Well, I mean, we we. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't want to go on about 
what happened in the summer um, and how close to oblivion we came, right? But it, you can't you can't not address that when you look at our current sort of you know our current position in the table and just how well this squad have done. Um, but you, you look through the squad, you see a certain level of belief. You know, you go one to eleven through our team now, and you think, you, as you as you literally list them, the only question marks are against our two centre backs. But really, those question marks are Bowdery because of injury, and you never know when he's going to go down and, and hold a you know hold his leg and then be stretched off, and 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 Dion, but purely from a point of view of his recent form. And the massive contribution that Brandon Cooper made when he came into the side, and the fact that we've got a returning Jake O'Brien now. So, but aside from that, you work through our side and you think, like, you know, yeah, first 11, top quality. But equally, with players coming back from injury, suspension, etc., it's starting to look more like it's the first 11 plus probably two or three subs as well. You know, we had Jack Payne on the bench at the, um, on Tuesday night. But Jaden Mitchell Lawson put in a fantastic shift against Oldham. He's proven to be a viable option off the bench. You know, the signing of Mandela Egbo, I think everyone realises what quality player we've got on our hands there. You've heard Lee Peacock tonight talking about Harry Parsons and what 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 he believes Parsons brings to the table as well. And I do, do genuinely believe, you look at the positions Parsons takes up, I genuinely believe it's a matter of if, not when. Parsons scores and then when he does score he's going to start putting some heat under the likes of Johnny Williams on the left hand side Harry McCurdy yeah he's our talisman but you know again it's all good competition for the front men so you know obviously Louis Reed's a big blow now isn't he going into um, uh, Saturday against Crawley with his suspension but um, how are you feeling Crawley away from home what's what's your gut feel Tyler uh, gut feels three points so Got Phil. All right, so I'm going to guess as usual. You're going to say your heart says four 0 What's your head saying? Uh, head says. What does the head say? Um. I I'll, I'll go three one. Okay, we'll take that. I'm going for a. I'm going for a tidy two nil. A tidy two nil, and it's going to be. It's gonna. It's going to break your heart, mate, because I'll tell you who's going to score one of them, and you know who that is. I think Ellis is going to finally do it, and I've got a sneaky feeling that if Ricky Aguiar starts, he's going to score a free kick. So a tidy 2-0 will do me nicely. But um, Crawley are one of those funny sides, aren't they? With a, you know, they're, they're not relegation fodder. They're just sort of a bit irritating. They, they kind of always... They just sort of hang on it, hang on in there, and at the end of the season, you suddenly look at the table, and they comfortably made it to, you know, mid table. You know, like, have you done that? Uh, what baffles me about Crawley is I look through the Crawley lineup, and I never ever recognise any of their players. I don't know whether you feel like that about them. I, I, I tend to, but that's more probably because of football manager than anything else. I, I, I genuinely, I mean, if you look through our lineup, right, and you go. Oh, yeah, like, you know, Harry McCurdy is a name that you recognise. You know, you'd recognise Jojo Woolacott from the African Cup of Nations if you were looking at this as a, as a you know, as a as a, uh, as a neutral. You'd you work your way Williams. down. Yeah, you're going to definitely recognise, you know, Johnny Williams. I say, you, you know, you're thinking, right, OK, yeah, there's a couple of lads in there that I recognise. But honestly, for all the seasons we've been turning out against Crawley, I think the only player that I ever really recognised was Isaac McLeod. Back in the day, uh, and big Brian Jensen at the back oh, from his time at from his time at Burnley, but I don't what? yeah I don't I don't recognise anyone any season at Crawley, and and I don't know what their recruitment model is, but they just always just seem to hang on in there. So I think um and with Tate the manager, three, mate, you'll recognise someone this year. Who's that? They've got bloody Mark Marshall. Oh yeah, well of course they have. Well okay. All right, you. I think we all knew when he was at Swindon there was a player in there. Um, and on his day, Mark Marshall has put in a couple of decent performances against us. I seem to recall, was it Paul Vale? Um, I remember him being, I'm sure it was Vale who was on the wing four and he looked threatening. And obviously there's a hoodoo with ex-players scoring against us, but uh, we've gone and jinxed it now, aren't we, talking about him? But no, I. so I, I fancy a nice tidy 2 0 That will do me nicely. Well, look, Tyler, we're just coming up to 11 o'clock, mate, which I think is more often than not, it's a, it's a good time to finish. Um, 
I'm glad you enjoyed um, Lee Peacock. I certainly did. And I'm sure our listening audience enjoyed it. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that listen into the recording that will feed back to us later in the week. I do apologise, everybody, for um, the, the nature of the show being on a Friday night. Um, as you know, we'll always run them on a Wednesday night where we can. Uh, this week, we pushed it back to Thursday. I'm going to be honest, it was my wife's birthday and there was no way my football-hating wife was going to allow me to miss her birthday to do our show. Um, so we moved it on to a Thursday and then, unfortunately, there were a few circumstances between um, the, all of us collectively, which meant that we've had to bump it back 24 hours um, at the request of Lee Peacock. But um, uh, he certainly didn't disappoint, did he? So um, I hope you've all enjoyed that. It's been an absolute treat having you all along. Um, Tyler, um, you're at the game tomorrow. Safe travels. I will give you a call when you're in the ground, and I'll certainly be listening in from my, um, from my wife's belated uh, birthday celebrations. Um, 1,100 town fans... Bring them home is what I would say. Uh, Bring uh, them points home. 1,099, mate. Oh, 1,099, yeah. Okay, there, there, could, there's a, there's a what could have been if, dragging I, if along I bought that me. ticket? I'm dragging along one from your neck of the woods, mate. Oh. That's a, it, that's a, that's a, that, you've just mentioned a, a filthy word. What, word Palace? Some, a, a, oh, oh, you said it oh. again. You, you, love now. you love him now. You love him. No, I don't. Wash your mouth out. I'll tell you what, I love him if they let us keep Jake O'Brien at the end of the season, and then I really would love them. I'll be loving them long time. If, if, they, if they let us keep Jake, you'll buy a Palace shirt with O'Brien on the back, won't you? Oh. Go on. No, no, no. That's still mm. be a step, step too far. No, 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 no. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. That'd be tantamount to. Oh, no, no. Mate, you were never going to get me dressing up like a stripy Nigel. I just want to make that absolutely <laughs> clear. It's never going to happen. I'm not interested. You call your mate. You tell your mate I called him a stripy Nigel when you see him tomorrow. And they know exactly what I'm talking about. But listen, safe travels, everybody, tomorrow. Um, as I say, bring those points home. Tyler, it's been a delight, mate. Thank you ever so much. Um, and thank you to everyone else for listening in. It's been a treat. Um, we've got a brilliant show lined up next week um more of which i will be tweeting later uh, but we have got a selection of professional footballers both past and present parents coming on the show next wednesday to talk about what it is to be a parent of a professional footballer which is sure to be uh, enlightening on so many levels um i will I'm more than happy to tell you a couple of them at the moment we've got some um, ex swindon town loan player johnny smith's dad um, is coming on to speak with us alongside um, our show's namesake, um, Tom Broadbent's dad, Eddie's coming on. Um, and we've got Irene Wellens joining us as well. And she might possibly be bringing a, a special guest with her as well. Although that has been complicated by um, recent appointments and such like. I'm, I'm sure you can guess who that could have been. But he may still make an appearance. So, yeah, as I say, we've got um, pro footballers parents coming on uh, to lift the lid on what it's like to be a parent of a pro and particularly a parent of a pro at Swindon Town past and present. So um, look forward to that. But in the meantime, thank you all again for tuning in. Look forward to catching up with you all, uh, hopefully in person sometime soon. But if not, hear you on the airwaves next Wednesday. Take good care, guys. Bye for now.